Jaden Ivey had his best game as a pro last night. 100%. Hands down, without a doubt. And, and I know that for certain. Eh. Eh? It's his best game as a pro. I mean, the piss is lost. Don't get me wrong. And, I, and I'm, I'll get to it. But I know it was his best game as a pro because I was tagged in multiple graphics <laughs> and multiple highlights. Dude was on triple-double alert. If you guys don't know, we finished tonight with 19 points, 10 boards, and 6 assists. And the, honestly, the part that I am most impressed with, Zero turnovers. Zero turnovers. That's that's massive because when you're the secondary ball handler, one of the things that he helps Cade, Matt, Cade Cunningham with, Frody and Slip, is you know being the secondary ball handler, taking some pressure off of Cade. And when you don't turn over the ball and you're a rookie, I was impressed with that for sure. Also, his efficiency, 6 for 12 from the floor, 2 yeah. for 5 from 3. He, led, he also led the team in every major statistical category, like points, rebounds, and assists, 19, 10, and 6. That's an impressive game. And... It's great to see because he's a guy that the Pistons are going to need moving forward as a rookie, as another Troy Weaver draft pick. So yeah. very impressed by Jaden Ivey. Nothing bad to say about him last night. 100%. I, oh, man. Stick, you, you said that too real quick. Um, listen, it was his best game statistically. Yeah. He had his best first half. He did not have his best That's fair. game. That's fair. Because the first half, he put up, what, 16, 10, and 6? Yeah. So he only put up four there. extra points in the, in the second half. That's why I'm saying, like, if we're going to say it's his best game ever, yeah. eh, it's kind of tough for me to go there because of what he did. Best first half by far. That's yeah. not even an argument. But I would have liked to see that. Now, you don't have to double that in the second half, but I'd yeah. like to at least see him keep pace with the first half. But to me, Jaden Ivey, it, it, he's, he's him. He's that, that dude. Like he's doing things in a piston uniform that I have never seen anybody do. Wow. Um, and you know, I'm the old man here, so yeah, I've been so watching longer Isaiah than you, whipper schnappers. Uh, no, I mean Isaiah wasn't above the rim player. Okay. Uh, he he was never that athletic to where he could finish in the rim above people like Jaden Ivey does. Yeah. Speed wise, ball handling, yeah, Isaiah has some in spades on that. But combined wise, the only player I've ever seen take on a team one on five like Jaden Ivey has done several times in this season is Grant Hill. That's the only guy I've ever seen try to take on a whole team at once. He is. That's one thing. First, because I'm I've been like dubbed as the Jaden Ivey hater, uh, like in the I think city. A little unfairly too, just for the record. Thank you, thank you, Flannel Sam. I appreciate that because I've always said I think he's gonna be very good. Maybe if not great. My only beef, which has always been, the fit, the fit alongside it. And guess what? In Jaden Ivey's best game, where he's probably you'd probably say he was more ball dominant. He was making most of the plays for guys. Guess who had the worst game? At that, least of the season. That would be Cade Cunningham. And not only did Cade Cunningham have a bad game, it was morbid. I couldn't believe what I was watching. One of 11, four points. And that led me to something that I know a lot of you aren't going to like, but I don't care. We have to have a discussion of whether Cade Cunningham is for sure going to be that transcendent superstar as a point guard. Because so far this season, he's averaging 26-6 and six with a worse field goal percentage and a worse three-point percentage than last year. And that's a problem for me because we thought that maybe those lack of efficiency last year was due to a bad start because you obviously saw what he did in March. But this year, besides those four games in the middle, I would say Cade Cunningham has been bad. He was, like, morbid, disgraceful last night. I've never seen him look that bad on a basketball court. And even if he played just a regular game, they might have had a chance against the Celtics. He cost that team probably at least a close loss or a win last night with his terrible play. And he hasn't even really been that great in, for the most part, this season. So I just, it's a question that I'm posing, maybe to the chat, just maybe to amongst Pistons fans. Are we sure that Cade Cunningham is that transcendent superstar? I thought he was going into the year. I've been a little disappointed with what I've seen so far. I, th I mean, I still think Cade can be, it's, it's tough because actually this guy, I got hit with this question, I think a couple weeks ago on a, on a, a Twitter space and by a gentleman named Mike, and he kind of posed the same question and then like he got killed for it. I mean, at that time, deserving so that was kind of like in the middle of his like four game, like hot streak where he was averaging, I think like 27 for a minute. Uh, there were games against the Hawks. We do well against the Hawks. Obviously we lost both of those games, but like Cade, Killian, we've seen them perform in those situations, but I kind of thought he was crazy until he said... And I'm a big Kate Cunningham guy, first and foremost. Like, let me get that out the way. And I'll, to the point where, like, the reason why I didn't like the Jaden Ivey pick is because I think we need to let Cade be the ball handler. I think, again, you saw Ivey last night in his best performance. 
Cade kind of dwindled. And yeah. I feel like Cade needs the ball in his hand. One, first and foremost, I think he is a he can be an elite playmaker. Say what you want about him being a, a superstar. I think, and I actually I have this as a question for you. Do you think he'll be an elite playmaker or at least a great one? I think so. But I would like to have seen more from him as a playmaker this year. I thought when they added Boyan Bogdanovich, and Boyan Bogdanovich is shooting the ball very well, that it would make Cade really skyrocket as a playmaker. And I think he has to some extent, but I expected those assist numbers to go way up. And they haven't really done that. And just for the record, I believe in Cade long term as yes, at sure. least the point guard of the future, at least a possible multiple time all star. But what I've seen so far this year, are we sure we should crown him as the next transcendent superstar, as the next, Whoa. you know, first team all NBA yet? I don't know. I haven't seen it so far this year. And you know basketball. You, you see a lot of players have these great games, have these great stretches, like Cade Cunningham did in four games in the middle of the year, like he did in the last month of last season. But in my opinion, basketball and all sports is about the totality of what you do over a season, over a month, over a career. I got to see it for a full season from him. For sure. I mean, it's 12... 12- <laughs> Flannel Sam, as always, you, you, you bring in the scoop for. I don't want to. I'm not ready to go down like that lane or prescribe to like that narrative just yet. I just, for me, what, what I think why it happened was, again, the same stuff that I was concerned about. And I get we're only 12 games into the season, and I get these guys are going to develop chemistry the same way it took Kate a little bit of time last year. That these guys are all new, they're all very, very young. They're just, they're acclimating to the NBA by itself, let alone like around their teammates. But I always just struggle with the fit of like, if people always. I think you said it, secondary ball handler. People on Twitter, my guy Jeff uh, Spinney, you know, they attacked me last night in our group text. Said, we need a secondary ball handler. You need a secondary ball handler. Do you? Do you? Because when, when I look at the championship teams of like the past like five years, and I asked this to Spinney and Jeff just so I get their answer, because I'm trying to like understand that side of the argument. But I'm looking at secondary ball handlers. I'm looking at like Jordan Poole, Drew Holiday. Like I don't think you need a elite secondary ball handler. Like, I just don't. I think Killian can fill like that role per se. I think you need superstars. I think wings win you rings. That's why I was a big. I was in the, the Ben Matherin camp. I, you know what I'm saying? I wanted him as a wing. Oh, by the way, Ben Matherin, 30 points last night, and they're 5 oh, and dude, 6. Dude, dude Benedict killing Benedict Matherin was great, and it, he was really good last night. For all of you who don't know, Benedict Matherin has been balling this year. And to what you said about a secondary ball handler, do I think it's essential? It just depends on how your team is constructed. I just want good basketball players who fit together, like yeah. wings. I think they're more essential than secondary ball handlers. Hey, thank you. That's where I'm at, too. I'm not saying... And, and I think a lot of it, too, has to do with the fact that Jaden Ivey, whether we like it or not, and I think we've all been pretty happy with his performance, he's our guy. And you're looking for reasons to be positive about him. Having him as a secondary ball handler, is that going to help Cade? I think so. And the fact is, Jaden Ivey is our guy. We might long, You might long for Benedict Matherin, but he's not ours. For sure. we got to learn how to embrace Jaden Ivey because... I mean, he hasn't been Ben Matherin, yeah. but Jaden Ivey's been really good. He's probably third in the Rookie of the oh, Year race trust so me, far. He's, he's easy to embrace. Like, he's, he, embra- he's like everything that Stick said. Like he, I don't want to put this name out there because I mean, it's, it's, again, this is twelve games into the season. But like, uh, much like uh, Derek Rose, like, when they hit the paint, he looks like electricity. He's all over the place. He's like finishing. I'll, I'll even go further than that. Like when I look at uh, Kate Cunningham and I look at Jaden Ivey, I see a young Jordan and I see a young Pippen. And really? you may think that Pippen wasn't uh, as great as he was, like just like if Cade's the number two on this team. Yeah. Pippen's a top 50 all-time player, man. He was one of those guys. I know Flannel Sam will probably crush that. But in the in the lore of the NBA, yeah. that those are facts, right? And Pippen, even though when he went to the Trailblazers, he didn't show out like he was supposed to. And when Jordan retired, like he couldn't take over the team. But when I look at these guys and their game, that's what I see. I see an above the rim player that with tons of athleticism in Ivy. That's my Jordan comparison. Body type very similar too. And then when you look at long, lanky, Scotty ass Pippen, he looks a lot like Cade Cunningham. Slow, methodical, in control of his game. And if those two can get that on court cohesiveness going like like Pippen and Jordan have, we're cooking, baby. And Stick. I hated the Bulls. Stick, why did you bring up Jordan and Pippen when it comes to Jay Nivey and Cade Cunningham? I want to be with you, but you took it just a little bit why? too far. Why? Why too far? 
because we don't even know if Cade Cunningham or Jaden Ivey are going to be stars, let alone You didn't superstars. know that Jordan and Pippen's rookie in sophomore years either. Bro. You knew that Michael Jordan was going to be no, a superstar you... from day one. He Dude, had one of the best rookie, rookie seasons rookie of all. Stats. 28 points a game, Stick. Come he, on, Stick. Yeah. Okay, he was a scorer, but he was not an all-around <laughs> basketball player. You didn't know he was going to be Michael Jordan. Hell, he didn't even, like, North Carolina didn't even know he was going to be Michael Jordan coming out. Well, that was Dean Smith's fault. He's the only one that can hold him under, under 20. And even in, in North Carolina, Carolina, he was good enough to be the number three overall pick. Just co pump the brake stick. Why'd you gotta go there, man? I because that's be what you. I see, Sam. That's what I see when I, I like I grew up watching those guys play. I see body type, I see game style, I see demeanor, and they're both and like if you look at it, they're very similar. My if my only I, it is kind of, it's kinda of wild, a little bit. Just because I, when I look at Cade. I see him as a, like a point guard, as a facilitator. When I look at Pippen, I saw him as a power forward. He's like two inches bigger, and I, he's just not the facilitator and like game manager I feel like Cade can be. I mean, Scottie Pippen was That's a pretty like good – he, he was a pretty good facilitator and a pretty good – and obviously one of the top 50 players of all time. But like I said, though, Jaden Ivey and Michael Jordan. If Jaden Ivey becomes Michael Jordan, and I'm hoping that he does, it's not going to happen, I will drop dead – on this desk well, because yeah. it ain't gonna happen. Listen, you're comparing him to the greatest basketball player of all time. I understand that's a steep thing, but look at their body type, look at their motion, and look how they finish. It's very similar. Not even close. Flannel Sam, you're calling out Kate Cunningham for not possibly being the star he's projected to be, which I don't agree with. I think there's a reason why we saw what we did last night, because that leads to my narrative in which I've always disagreed with the fit. I've never, I never told you guys that Jaden Ivey was going to be bad. I've never said that Jaden Ivey couldn't ball in this league. I said he could be a star. I just think he needs the ball in his hand. I think he needs to be the guy. I think he needs to be the John Morant. You know what I'm saying? John Morant doesn't have another ball handler like Cade. Do, you know what I'm saying? He also needs to dominate the ball to be effective on the court. Because as much as like we do love Cade, I don't know that he is as fantastic or borderline superstar off ball as he is with the ball in his hands. And I think it's vice versa. It works for both guys, both Cade and Ivy. And I think when we saw Ivy on last night, that's why we saw Cade off. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. I definitely see what you're saying. But I think it's just even deeper than fit. I don't think it's excusable for Cade Cunningham, in my opinion, to be one for 11 from the floor in a game. We're going to need to see some turnaround. We're going to need to see them actually play well together because at some point, those are the last two highest Troy Weaver draft picks. They're going to have to figure it out. And in some games, I would say that they have. Last night was just the most extreme example we've seen of Jaden Ivey kind of having his coming out party and Cade Cunningham probably having the worst game he's probably ever had since like he was five, six years old. <laughs> Honestly, that was awful. Four points, bro. One of 11. Yeah, one of 11. Not, not a good look.